Hello to viewers. Welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about hybrid vehicles. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing we have to understand what exactly is the problem with current EV market is that EV cars have very small range. Now, small range as in like if you are not paying boatload of money, you are only expecting 100 to 150 kilometer. That is like, you know, that's actually more than good enough for 99% of humanity. But it's like, you know, people have psychological need where they're like, dude, my vehicle should not be the limiting factor. So even though that kind of uh, range is available in many city uh, most selling kind of uh, you know low budget cars but the benefit those uh, petrol cars have is simply because they take a very little amount of time to recharge while electric vehicles take idiotically long amount to charge aka most commonly available chargers that are level two chargers uh, as in like three phase system it could expect to charge your car at like you know five to six hours basically a good night's sleep is needed to charge your car from zero to hundred so fundamentally these two things combined basically a it does not have long enough range b once you are depleted the range it will take very long time to charge it uh, makes basically long range driving impossible now be mindful long range driving is not something people do is just something people psychologically want and like even though you may uh, find a car that can travel like you know have big enough fuel tank to travel for like let's say 1000 kilometer you should not do that ask truckers like what kind of uh, you know body pain they have to go through in order to do that so fundamentally speaking it's not something that we do it's not something that data uh, proves that we do but we want it to be so all these three things combined creates a psychological barrier for people to buy the goddamn car They're like dude, even if you buy electric car it will be beneficial to you people will still not buy it so most people flat out ev car no thank you no thank you it's like even though that's well suited for me it's like no thank you so companies uh, were stuck in a you know conundrum so they come up with a solution solution is you're gonna have a benefit of electric car just you're gonna have a power generator on board itself now that will give you two drive mode aka battery plus uh, fuel powered now you may like why the heck you want to go through all the extra trouble well the two driving modes will be automatically uh, you know switched but you're gonna get best of both world what does that mean that simply means most of the time your daily commute is less than 50 kilometers or again in some places it could be a bit more depending on states and like how far people travel but generally it's not very far if you have a battery bank that is just big enough to do that regularly reliably you're gonna come home you're gonna charge the system charging will cost much less money simply because the battery bank itself is smaller and because the battery bank is smaller per uh, kilometer travel you will consume less energy so you're gonna get the benefit of uh, like you know optimized electric car but what happens if you forgot to charge your car and you like you know start to drive car is like i got you fam i'm gonna use the uh, basically internal combustion engine to charge the battery and provide you driving range same will happen if you like let's say for friday evening you're supposed to come home and then you're like you know what i feel like i will go on a long drive you can do that your car is like i got you fam so the idea is best of both world you're gonna get the range quick refilling on a petrol station and uh, uh, the efficiency money saving all that jazz of uh, electric car so best of both world without you needing to buy two vehicles where you could be like hey um, like 99% of the time I know how far I'm gonna travel I'm gonna utilize the electric system if I do uh, like you know end up in a scenario where it's like I have to travel very long I will use car B you do not need car B this puppy will give you best of both world in single chassis so that's the whole point of this now what's the design of this like how do you actually accomplish this well you start with four components component number one ice aka internal combustion engine component number two generator generator and then you have motor and then you have uh, battery now be mindful in some scenarios people have tried to make generator and motor into the same thing but like it's it has some issues because you could stuck in a scenario where it's like you have to stop the car in order to charge the battery you you want your uh, cars to like you know basically charge while it's driving so in that scenario generator and motor has to be made into a separate unit so that's why most of them have two separate units now benefit of this puppy is that it will give you smaller battery and smaller motor now motor part is kind of difficult part because ideally people want like you know i press the you know pedal to the metal and i whoosh, uh, but that does not happen on a small electric motor you need huge ass motor so in those sort of scenario to compensate for that kind of like you know puny like 50 horsepower or 100 horsepower motor they are like okay what if the generator itself acts as a uh, you know motor and aids it so you could have a scenario where it's like even though car's main motor main driving motor only has let's say 100 horsepower 50 horsepower can be added to it utilizing the uh, another motor and in some scenarios if you want to even more performance you're like you know i'm gonna go fast and furious on its ass uh, then it's gonna be like okay all those things are going full out and then I'm also I'm gonna dump in the you know in the internal combustion engine at that point in time whoosh. 
so that will max out the system now switching is not something you do basically that's the only reason people would even bother buying something this complex is yes switching happens automatically think of it this way how you have a uh, cars nowadays which has uh, basically eco mode sports mode things of that nature this puppy has the same thing but it's happening internally and computer is controlling based on how much pedal you are pressing basically how much you are accelerating what is the state of the charge of the battery uh, what is the temperature everything like it will try to calculate as many data points as possible based on that it will do the switching so if you're like hey dude all you are doing is just stop and go traffic it's like gonna disable all the internal combustion engine is just motor because at that point in time that's the most efficient system because your battery also has the ability to recharge aka regenerative braking so you will uh, you know survive a uh, stuck and go traffic very easily and if you are traveling in like a snail space which is very difficult for internal combustion engine unless you have liquid torque converters electric motors like bro i can drive at one kilometer per hour without any issue so there is the benefit of both worlds and if you want to like highway and i'm gonna go floor it it has the internal combustion engine to back it up however if you have not seen many hybrid cars and if you like to isn't like i made it sound like amazing then why the heck i not see it everywhere heck you are more likely to see electric vehicle than to see hybrid vehicle there was an inherent flaw in the designing department principal awesome science awesome engineering black so the fault was basically nobody kissed the design what does that mean you're supposed to keep it simple stupid if you do not do that no matter how good your project is is gonna fail because that happened like uh, this is from a general electrics uh, uh, system and they built a surprisingly amazingly uh, you know complex system but that's the problem it's complex complexity is the enemy of reliability what does that mean that simply means the drive train was complex so the idea was at any given moment of time three things can be connected to your goddamn driving wheels you have your primary motor you have generator that can act as a motor and then you had internal combustion engine that can also connect to the drive train so that was idiotically complex you can uh, this puppy has three clutch packs three not one not two three it's like this was idiotically complex and in some cases of uh, basically hyundai unit they had a uh, you know constant uh, uh, constant i'm saying basically constantly varying transmission basically cvt and uh, that's how they were trying to do like you know uh, power transfer from motor to this this was idiotically complex benefit of uh, that was like on paper it was like this amazing feature this amazing feature this much reality was like dude you will go bankrupt trying to build it so manufacturing cost of all these things were idiotically high and then the r d cost was the main issue because if you're trying to build something this complex of course you have to spend r d time money into this and consequence of that is like basically per unit price will go up or you have to sell it hopefully that you're gonna sell millions of these two in order to recuperate the cost which did not happen so chevrolet bolt was like scrapped so that was the whole point of it the r d was too expensive the manufacturing was too expensive because again you have to build these things and even if the machine like you may be like hey clutch pack is not that expensive. putting three clutch packs in a drive train will be expensive because you're gonna need a uh, basically a robotic instrument that can do that or person that can do that if people do that price per unit will go high if you rock Rockets, uh, rockets and things. Basically, robots do that. Price will go down. But if you have need many robots, you cancel out the benefits. So that's why R and D cost was high. Manufacturing uh, was like a nightmare. Servicing was too complex. Basically, these things inherently cannot last like you know 30, 40 years. Do not expect this. Like because the moment somebody is gonna open, it's like no, thank you. I'm not gonna try this. It's like trying to like a. Uh, there is an individual who on YouTube who does this photo is directly from there. It's like it's idiotically complex. Like. 10 years don't have to worry about it but what happens after 20 what happens after 30 or what happens you want like you know second hand or third hand or fourth hand you can replace the battery but the moment you touch the drivetrain you're like okay bye bye so that's the whole point that's why even though most company poured billions of dollars most of the projects are dead not the company but the projects they are like you know uh we're not gonna claim it's dead it's just gonna you know slowly phase it out or in some cases we're gonna directly announce yeah i'm sorry we tried this this was a bad idea nobody kissed the design so it failed now, what does that mean? Does that mean the hybrid concept is dead? Well, no, there is a little bit of hope. Basically, uh, I have been contacted by many people who want to claim to. Uh, they want to start a, basically you know, small startup to make electric vehicles. And all of them say the same stupid thing. It's like, I'm going to make an electric car system, which is going to be like cheap and going to have long range. You cannot do that because batteries are idiotically expensive. You cannot do that. And every engineer working in Tata, Mahindra, uh, Toyota, uh, Ford, everybody is thinking the same thing. It's like, how can I make the cheapest car for the most amount of range? They can't do it simply because battery is expensive. So there is a small window at this point in time from 2022, basically 2070 or something like that, like 50 year kind of window where uh, petrol car will be slowly phased out. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in the next 10 years. It's going to happen very slowly. So that gives you a 
window of opportunity now in those windows opportunity if somebody goes back to this design hybrid system and kisses it they basically learn from the engineering world aka diesel electric transmission which we have first time it was built like first steam uh, basically steam electric system was built in 1903 so they had coal that made steam steam drive the uh, basically generator generator drive the propellers in a battleship so that's how old this technology is like try utilizing the system but it is simple no clutch packs are needed you do not want like you know things uh, indirectly coupling you always want path of energy to be as simple as possible yes it may be a bit inefficient but it's far more a easy to make b easy to repair c super easy in terms of production flexibility and that's the amazing aspect of it like for example if you're talking about like huge ass truck as in like dump trucks that are like hundreds of ton kind of a total uh, vehicle mass they can easily uh, run on diesel electric locomotive that's not an issue heck every single diesel locomotive runs on that system and none of them have clutch so that's the whole point of this if they simplify the design hybrid system has more than enough system so what does simplifying the design means simply you have internal combustion engine it has a generator unit which only acts as a generator like fine-tune the motor design just to uh, motor design i'm saying like basically a rotor design to act as a most amazing generator as you can make then that generator feeds the battery battery feeds the motor motor tries the wheel so all you are doing is that simple line you will not have a scenario as like what if like you're up uh, flooring the system and then it's gonna like okay i will make uh, you know power the generator as a motor to you know get some more oomph out of it and then it's like oh if you are even more power then i'm gonna use the internal combustion no 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 just one simple thing you're gonna be put as big of a motor as you can do because well that's the whole reason why you need it to like you know have a generator but if you're gonna have the motor and all is gonna do is drive the main chassis you do not have like you know two things three things uh, you know making love to each other just one goddamn thing so that way you get two main benefits first production flexibility and what does that mean that simply means uh, uh, basically in case of toyota they can be like hmm what if we instead of a fuel system uh, we put replace it with hydrogen system so all you're gonna do is like put a hydrogen fuel cell and put a hydrogen fuel tank done go home again hydrogen is a bad idea what if you want to do something more practical let's say methane methane is really uh, feasible in case of india simply because india's uh, capital aka delhi has a cng network already done like most of the public transport relies on it cng is compressed methane so if somebody in future figures out how to make uh, basically we already have made it in lab in actual production but right now unit cost is too high so somebody figures out how to make a methane based uh, fuel cell solid oxide fuel cell it is uh, most amazing system why because hydrogen while it's amazing fuel it's garbage for in real life use why per uh, kilogram of hydrogen gg power per liter of hydrogen in normal atmospheric pressure is useless like one liter of hydrogen is nothing compared to one liter of petrol so that problem is solved by carbon by introducing carbon into hydrogen system so you have ch4 methane system that will give you the basically density of methane we have been driving system on that so we already have the infrastructure many countries are there i'm not talking about like india specifically many countries have cng infrastructure so you can utilize this puppy get higher efficiency and have fun or heck even if some new technology comes around let's say solid cell uh, basically solid electrolyte uh, battery system you can just uh, increase the size of the basically battery bank and like you know petrol system we know for a fact that people might want to drive it but we know for a fact that you know it's not something that's going to happen every time let's just tone it down instead of let's say 100 horsepower unit put a uh, 50 horsepower unit so in case you run out it's like still there it's just like yeah i'm not gonna drive like you know 200 kilometer per hour on a highway i'm only gonna drive at 100 kilometer per hour in the highway so there is some side effects but it has production flexibility it's not gonna make you bankrupt and it gives you the ability to scale each component individually so you can research as much as you want on the motor department and then sell it to other companies or directly buy from Siemens if you have to and then buy, uh, motor like that was the whole problem with a uh, volt concept it was amazing but idiotically poorly engineered like nobody kissed it like their battery bank was amazing like per kilogram per liter wise it will destroy any Tesla battery bank even today and then how the heck they went bankrupt yeah it's like you know everything is amazing just look at the price you're like what the heck and what did Tesla do? It's like, hey, 18650, not the most amazing system, but it's mass produced already. What if we put that and we, uh, you know, submerge this puppy in oil so we can cool it, so we can extract more power out of it. Done. That's the whole thing. You always want to kiss your design. Many companies fail to do that and consequences, they go bankrupt. So there is a, uh, you know, window of opportunity here. So that's my hope anyway. I do not think this will ever come to pass, but my hope. So this was my presentation on hybrid system. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I would urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.